You, I think you do as well. Play a lot of games on your phone. Uh, yeah, I try to. It's full of fucking kids' games there on mine. Well, yeah, because you, you're little. And, but yeah. when you're like, you go for a cigarette or taking a shit or whatever. I never find a good one, though. I find one that interests me for like 10 seconds and I get bored. Well, I found a few decent ones. Mm. Fucking adverts, mate. Mm. They've, oh, they've evolved like and got so much worse. So you used to have one that would be like, after 10 seconds, you can do the cross and you're back in the game, yeah? Mm. Now it's, after five seconds, you can do it. And then it comes up with another little bit and loads up a preview of the game. Yeah. And then you have to wait five seconds and then you cross it. And then it comes up, why not install it now? Mm. And you have to wait five seconds to do it. When the fuck did they realise how to subject us to advertising whilst taking a shit? Because that's when you play games, isn't it? For some people, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's the whole thing. You offer a, a free bit of content, it's got to, someone's got to pay for it. Fucking ads, unreal. Yeah. Unreal, mate. Old as, age as old as time, mate. Yeah, I know, but it's pissing me off. Especially when you get into a good game as well, and it's like every two minutes. How's you been, boy? How's you been? How's you been? How's your wheelie been? I'm not going to lie to you, bruv. I'm, I'm dead out this week. I've done, I've, done, I've done nothing. Drunk a lot of wine, though. Yeah. Managed that. Oh, yeah, you did say that. Yeah. yeah. Got a few bottles down with Greg. Didn't uh, the in-laws give you a couple? Did, yeah. Got a little, a little yeah. parcel from the in-laws. They belong to a wine club. Dropped six bottles off for me. Oh, yeah. Very, very nice. Polished them off. Thanks very much. That sounds like a good week, to be fair. It was decent. They're a bit more uh, higher in alcohol content, though. <laughs> sounds but like a great week, Normally, like the, the pissy one I buy, like 12%, these were 14, 14 and a half percent. It's different gravy, guys. It's like going from having a Foster's to a Stella with a vodka in it. Yeah, like piss water. <laughs> you, you're drinking the same sort of shit, Turbo but it's, effect, yeah, it's affecting you different. It's hard to get a handle on it. Hence the fact you visited me over the weekend, and where oh, I normally yeah. might not be as drunk as I was, I was, I was, I was quite drunk. He was asleep pretty early. Pizza and pizza turned up. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it was me. Pretty dead out week. Mate, same here. I haven't been drinking, but normal stuff. Playing basketball, loads again. Love that shit. Literally came from basketball just now. I got the, you can see the ball out the corner of your Should eye. Should I just like insert a cut and paste clip each week? Yeah, ain't it? When I ask you what you've been up to, I just go, hold oh, no, on, let me just record this 10 seconds. I'll tell you, I'll save me asking the question. So I'll, I've learned about I'll myself, play. my life. I just want to live out passions. So, like, we do this podcast because it's shits and giggles. It's good fun. I play basketball because I really enjoy it and I just want to get better. I do kids football because it's just a lot of fun. Really enjoy it. I think life's about passions, mate. I've got passion for the bottle opener, bruv. Love that, <laughs> love that motherfucker. Passionate at getting those percentages. Passionate. I'm passionate about... It's a technique, mate. Put it a cork. And that's the annoying thing about posh wine. It ain't no screw top shit. Yeah. You got, How you got do you know when you've corked it? Well, Do you honestly know? You, you just know. You just know for experience. Like when you they're see in a the restaurant, dude brings over a little you, you see sip for you, and someone turns around and goes, "Oh no, it's cold." How the fuck do you know? So I, I just thought, thought of a random fucking irritation in a minute. Go on. This is turned right. into what grinds my this, gears. This, this, this grinds my gears proper, right? And you know how much I'm sure I've spoke to you about this before. Get Robinson's orange, yeah, yeah, in a bottle, one liter, brilliant. Okay. Then some smart dudes managed to turn that into a, like a double concentrate. Right, so you yeah. could get twice the amount in the same size bottle. And it's, it's, like, it's, it's caught, not really. It's really. caught many a man out. You know yeah. what I mean? You've not, read the, you've not read the label. You poured it out. You take a sip and you, you, you're gagging almost straight away. They've now invented quadruple strength. Oh, well. So it's double, double concentrate. Dumb cunts. Like, leave shit alone. Like, please. <laughs> like, put your money into other shit. Like, you're pissing in the wind, geez. You've got no idea, because every glass is a different shape, so you can't go, oh, verbatim, that's, that's the where it should go Why up is to. that just not the standard? As in, why don't they go, we've found a way to make it a lot stronger, so you need to use less. We're just going to mug off the old one, then. Mate, stop being environmentally friendly and save my gullet. I'm burning it with citric fucking acid here. Leave that shit alone. Next thing, you're going you to wake up next week and it'll be eight times concentrate. All Cause you need is a, is a pipette. <laughs> Cause of death. Leave Robinson's. it alone. Leave it. <laughs> Spend your money on other shits. So, Joseph, season two. Episode 11. No. Episode 12. This is the finale. Is it, does that not include a special, though? No, we're going to mug it off, I reckon. No, I mean, like, the count of episodes. Is there not a special one? Or is it, are you counting the Christmas one? No, but the special we've got is with the guest, Hi Alex. And that was a football special. Other than that, 
mm. all standards. We had a end te- of season special last week. Technically, month. I'm not wrong. Do you know what? We're going to mug it off. We're just going to bang out a banging episode, as per usual, and crack on. First thing we've got this week, transfer deadline day. But we're not going to dwell too much on it, because in all honesty, it was shit our fault. For other clubs, if you're Newcastle, you know, fantastic. If you're Everton, fantastic. Right. Yeah, that's true. And signing Frank Lampard. That's right. decent. Yeah, yeah. If you say good. for our clubs, as United, we made a signing. It's uh, Mason Greenwood's arrest warrant, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking awful, isn't it? That's not, yeah, he's, he's fucked, isn't he? When I first see it, and I see it on like Sky Sports fresh early on, hmm. it was suspected like she posted something on Twitter and then deleted it. And that's all they pretty much said. And I'm like, Oh, here we go. Are we looking? Is this attention seeking or is it? And then you see the footage and the. Have you got the recording? Oh, yeah, I've, recording? I've, seen, I've seen all, all sorts. The thing is, if it gets as far as a media outlet, it has to have gone through some level of duty of care because otherwise you know you're open to be sued. And the amount of people that cut ties, so Nike straight away, boom. Sure. Man United stopped selling all the shirts. Do you know shirts. why? Because the club. Have known about this for months. You, this woman. Right, this is the first I've heard of it. And how do you know? All right, yeah, a little little bomb for you then. Yeah, this woman has been reporting this for months and months on end. It's, it's, it's only now she's gone public with it. She's been reporting it for little bits and pieces. What they're, to the police? They're all minor. Yeah, to the police. Right. Making domestic abuse complaints. All little minor, little tiny, little abuse pieces. They can't do anything. It's no evidence. They can't prosecute unless the one wants to press charges if there's no sign of it obviously so that's abuse. what led her to record stuff and... yeah that's why she started to document right. it to a point where she's like I need to have proof if I'm going to come out this is going to be explosive okay. Manchester United have known about this for months and months and months on end PR first person that fucking finds out about this way before the papers Manchester United's PR person tells the club they decided to continue playing on because they knew he's an asset they thought well fuck it if you don't hit the public newspapers we ain't got to worry wow that is how that's why it's wow. engineered so quickly, and it's shockingly quick. He's been pulled out. Of the, I don't know if you mentioned it. He's been pulled out of the uh, FIFA game. Yeah, that's crazy. Like they knew the sponsors. Mate, the club if you knew, go man. back and play like FIFA 2010, you can still be Adam Johnson. So to get pulled out of the game, yeah, I'm telling you, man. Their money men knew. They knew about this stuff. The questions yeah, the integrity Knight straight away. Man United were like, he's not training. He's not playing. FIFA is a big one. FIFA. Yeah, there's, there's no coming back from this. Even if he. It doesn't get proved, or there's not enough evidence to charge. He's not, he's not playing for Man, Man United again. So this made me think, why is it different now? Because do you remember you had like Robin Van Persie had the rape charges? Evidence to proceed. You also had... Ronaldo claim, verbal claims that there's no yeah. evidence to proceed. It's just... This is a lot of evidence, which is why I think it's been dropped. It's odd, man, because you say there's no coming back from this. If he gets convicted of this... Goes to prison, serves his term, comes out at the age of 28 and Portsmouth have just been promoted to the championship. They've got the opportunity to sign him. What do you do? I don't know, mate. I don't know. That's difficult, that, because because of what he's in there for. People will see it, especially with the whole council culture, people will see it as condoning what he's done in the past, basically. Do you think it compromises the ethics of your club if you sign someone like that? Even though you know they'd be yeah. fucking mustard for you. Yeah. Obviously, you'd pick up a mustard player level. Well, there's, I'll tell you what, there's a good example this week, right? There's a geezer called David Goodwillie, just signed for Rafe, Rafe Rovers, Scotland. Okay. Um, he got, well, he kind of he kind of didn't, didn't get done. He got kind of done. It was him and another guy called David Robertson, and he got taken <laughs> to court. They had a freezing of the bird and night out. <laughs> wow. um, got taken to court, and she accused him of rape. The prosecutor, looking at the evidence, refused to bring any criminal proceedings, right? He said there's, there's not enough. Okay. In front of me, I can't charge these guys. There's nothing that fits the bill I can charge anyone with. She weren't happy. She raised a civil case. And the civil case went to court and the judge ruled that she was not a willing participant. Right. But there wasn't enough criminal evidence what? to prosecute. And instead, settled on a £100,000 compensation with fifty grand to be paid from Goodwillie and Robinson. So... She didn't consent to either of them. Is that what she well, said? This, this is it. The judge did she consent she, to one of them? He he doesn't believe she consented, but there's no criminal evidence to prosecute. 
It basically means it's your word against theirs, basically, and I can't right. send them out to jail on your word. So, 100 grand for your word against theirs? Yeah, yeah, that's the weird thing. Some off-key must have happened that he could maybe have done something. Now, I don't want to be crass, but that's a bit of an ironic name to be involved in it. <laughs> David Goodwillie. <laughs> I did, as soon as you said that, I was like, don't giggle, don't do the toddler thing and hear the word right, Willie and right. have a little cuddle. Sort of- I, I think it does come down to the ethics of a club. Well, do you know what pissed me off? There was like the women's charity for domestic abuse, which started saying about Man United should do something about it, should this, that, the other. And you're like, hold on. How far does this go? If you was to get done for something like that, is anyone going to turn around and blame your employers? No, they've got no reasonable control over that situation. Exactly. They can't unless, control what he does at home. Unless they are talking about... Unless they knew about it. The but that, that wasn't, knew about that it wasn't part of it. And that was fresh as well. That was when it was first reported. It just pissed me off. You're like, right, yes, you should be saying something because it's directly to do with your charity. And you should be saying about more women should speak out or the police should be doing more. But it's turn around and blame Man United as a club. It's like, no, that's how you get clickbait. Yeah. When I think more will come out. United, now more, you're getting more people looking at you. More devil in the detail will come out of this, and we, and we will find out whether or not it is a rumour that, man, you knew about this, or whether it's proved to be true. I've got a strong, strong feeling it's going to be true. Yeah. Strong. Yeah, 100%. Because of the amount of people that have cut him off. That's yeah, done. It's not looking good. And do you know what? It sounds really bad. When me and her won that competition, mm-hmm. got a signed shirt at Mason Greenwood, didn't we? It's worth fuck all now. No, no, I was doing might, it for the value. Might, not be, might, might, might go the other way. No. If I sell it to like domestic abuse believers. All, all he needs <laughs> is one more transfer. Enthusiasts. I, I can see him getting signed to play on the wing. B wing. Well, young young go, offenders institute. Can you imagine if he does actually like make a U turn, he comes round and he's like England's top goal scorer. And then I turn around and I'm like, I've got his kit from that season where he got done. <laughs> Can't believe you just steamrolled my joke there. What? Not a fucking sausage. What? Did you not even hear that? I mean, he's been been signed to play on the wing. Yeah. B wing. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, too late now. Yeah, no, my joke. Bad. You had to be there. No, nah, I did, I'll but give that some love. I'm move, sorry. Move it on. My bad. All right, I got one for you. Go on. You know, I've spoken in the past about people. If you're gonna, if you're gonna be dumb. Yeah. You deserve to get caught out. Right. If you're gonna be dumb, you gotta be tough. <laughs> you know, you, you're gonna deserve to. What was that fella before? Took a photo, didn't he? Didn't check what was being sent to the missus. It's one of them photos that carried on oh, taking somebody's... photos oh, after. Right. And she, yeah, and he got. Do you know what I mean? Don't be dumb. Now, there's probably a few chicks in the world like this, but this is how dumb some people can be, and how, how scammy you can be, right? There's this Norwegian bird, right? She's called Cecile. I won't give her a second name away. I don't Cecil. want to get it done again. Yeah. All right, it's called Cecile. She thought she discovered a millionaire diamond dealer on Tinder. Oh, yeah, as you do. Right? Yeah. Met him on Tinder. Uh, on t- on, on Tinder? It's on Tinder. Is he a lumberjack? Met him on Tinder. Um, Instagram, he's got like jets, helicopters, fast cars, all that bollocks. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Everyone, I think that's, isn't that everyone's Instagram File, yeah, Photoshop. I don't have it, man. So I don't, I don't really know. Just what it Photoshop, is. isn't it? No, nah, probably not all Photoshop, isn't it? Some, some people are probably sitting on like Bugatti hoods. If you're a baller like that, why are you going on Tinder? That? Well, this is it exactly. This is red flag number one. Right, <laughs> first time they meet up, he takes her to the Four Seasons in London. Oh, so he's a legit guy. Eh? Now that's okay. a five star restaurant, right? He's saying an episode of Catfish. Don't like, get me wrong. This guy's just layering. Putting in a, he putting in the groundwork, right? Right. He's also got, quote, quote, fingers in the air, a bodyguard with him. Okay. Right, man's just putting in hard work right now. At that point, he says to this chick, do you want to come to with me to Bulgaria tonight? I've got a business meeting. She actually turns around and says yes. Motherfucker follows through with this with a private jet over to Bulgaria. Shut your dirty mouth. Go well, he's, to... got a, he's got to have money then. Well, yeah, he's got some money. He's got some front. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you the overall figure. Go on. When we get... To the end. But yeah, man's got some front. Takes him over to Bulgaria. They fuck that night. They fall in love. Yada, yada, yada. She sees some scars on his back, right? She goes, where'd you get that from? Oh, like some shady business clients. Right. She's like, oh, okay, ooh, dangerous. Diamond, diamond trade, isn't it? Yeah. Blood diamond. Blood diamond. Yeah. Dangerous trade. He's like, I've got a deal on the line. 51 mil, yeah? 
Lovely. See you in a bit. I'll be back in a few months. I've got to go and close this off. Sends her a photo of the back of that ambulance. Oh, shit. Shady business geezers. Got involved, busting me up. Yeah. Uh, guess I've got to go. They're tracking me now. I've got, I've got to get rid of all my uh, uh, credit cards and stuff like that because I think they're tracking me through the system. So uh, what I need you to do is set up a loan credit facility or transfer to so you can transfer me oh, X amounts wow. of money. And he'd done her for like 185 grand. Wow. That's that don't a sound lot too much. Dough. But 180, 185 that's grand. That's a mortgage in some areas. Bear in mind, this geezer's fronting on private jets. How much is a private jet? Yeah, because cost? he's probably spending about 50 grand a day and getting one to 200 grand back. Absolutely savage, right? Oh my shit. They reckon he's been doing it for a number of years and they reckon they've seen 7.4 million pounds yeah. go his way. Just from pulling some I don't bare say yeah, shit. like I'm but dumb, dumb him. cunt. Who, what 51 million pound dollar deal from an international diamond seller is going to get Cecile sitting in Norway? Oh, Cecile, you got can you help me out? 185, 185 grand, grand. That just um, that's, that's like that's the equivalent of a Nigerian lottery. What, yeah, why is she not turning around and go, I had the sickest night, I went to Bulgaria in a private jet, and now I'm done. Cool beans. I'll, I'll cut her a degree of slack. Nah, man. Normal man. Since he no, starts normal, asking you no, for money. Well, normal woman on the street don't get to experience what she's just experienced in a whirlwind romance. S- but at the same time, dumb. Don't be dumb. Yeah, Why as would soon you be as he's asking you for money, nah. Why would you? Yeah, I don't get it. That's so fine. Yeah, people being dumb again, man. I've got one for you. What you saying? Very relevant to what we do. What? Joe Rogan. Yay. Have you seen this? Yeah, boy. No, what? He's in the news for a lot of stuff, to be fair. Joe Rogan versus Neil Young. No, yeah, Neil, he's got the ump about saying, hasn't he? So, you, you know what Rogan's podcasts are like. For anyone that don't listen to it, which obviously you do. It's not exactly pro, is it? Is this about the, the so COVID? He's like anti-vax. Yeah, he's not exactly pro-vax, is he? But it's not that. He's got people on the show that agree with him or disagree with him. And he talks it out and he always makes it clear that it's his opinion. He's not calling facts. Or if he does look for facts, he gets it checked. Mm. Neil Young has basically turned around to Spotify and gone, it's me or him, because he's spreading anti-vax. And Spotify went, uh, see you later. Do you know why that's come about, though? Because one slipped through the fucking net. They had a person on there uh, who spoke from a medical background point of view. Right. Um, and Rogan kind of got very persuaded by their presentation and point of view. And, it, and then surely it's that person. Yeah, but what they're saying in, in, in the first place is yeah. like, has got a responsibility not to give a space for that to be heard. I suppose because he's being paid by Spotify, like you, millions. Of course, you and I would then argue, it's down to Rogan to then debate. But that got me thinking, a podcast is meant to be like freedom of speech. Hmm. You're meant to be able to say whatever you want. It's your opinion. Well, there, we've, we have debated this before, though, I think. Well, there freedom is, there of is speech, no thing, yeah. There's no such thing as freedom of speech. Should we have an uncensored platform? Because that is the last platform to be censored, really, a podcast. And now this is the first instance on a big scale. Like TV, you have a watershed or there's certain things you can't say on TV. Even you and I, that are not tied into any kind of licensing, any kind of you're not rule, signed to rules really and regulations, yeah, we, yeah. we cannot... Just say what we want. Yeah, but is that because, not fear... Criminal act. Is it fear that it could be used against you? No, I wouldn't worry about that. I just think it's a very extreme thing. We're talking complete freedom of speech where you can say what you're saying. You can say what you want. There are things you're not allowed to say because it's a criminal act. Racially abusing someone, it's a criminal act. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. But when you're talking about anti-vax and giving your opinions around yeah, that yeah. stuff. You should be allowed to give your opinion. So why? That's what a podcast is there for. It's meant to be uncensored. It's meant to be like radio with no music. You, yeah, you can give opinion. You can't present fact. I mean, they've been gunning for him. They don't... He's. I can't remember what side it is over there, left or right. It's like similar to ours. But they've been gunning him from him from one side to the other for a long yeah. time, Rogan. He's made a big noise. He's upset a few people. But for <sighs> someone that puts out a podcast every day... With different oh, the work, the work that man puts in, but with different guests that are doctors and are prof- like professional in their field, yeah, you're gonna come out with a million different opinions. So, p- 
people are not going to agree with him. And it goes back to the, if you don't like it, turn it on. Do you know what? We wouldn't be sitting here right now if it weren't for Rogan. No, definitely not. I think a lot of podcasts were started during lockdown because of Rogan. Nah. Because people started to watch it. Go. Yeah. For don't, worry, don't worry, folks. Yeah, that's not this it's, week's It's, it's not go. I'm just, I'm just saying. Nah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one for you. Made, you. made me laugh a bit, right? Um, yeah. Teenager has been asked to delete Twitter that tracks Elon Musk's private jet. Well, I saw this, but I don't understand it. So he's got a Twitter account that tracks the How is it tracking jet? it? Because it's all airspace and it's got to be recorded. So he, that's like public information or if you're in on that shit. I don't understand that's it. possible. Could I do that? Well, you can track it. Yeah, there's websites you can go on and track a certain plane on a flight number. And they give you the flight path and show the, you where it the is. The missus' granddad was obsessed, remember? Oh, yeah. Every time yeah, you definitely. saw him, it's like, oh, i just seen yeah. EasyJet, and it's been, it's been day flying it for the fourth time this week. So he's, t- he's literally 19 years old, created this Twitter account. Elon Musk, or well, his company or whatever, have asked him to delete it, and he asked for 50 grand. <laughs> he's like, all right, I'll delete it. It's going to cost you. I would go back to him and say, I'll give you 75 grand and a job offer. You clever little cunt. Yeah. Yeah, decent. I like that. That's a good little spin on it there. Decent. One thing that did make me laugh, just because of the first word in this. <laughs> Chinese. Brilliant. They fuck up again, don't they? Well, they done. So, you know, this year's the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, isn't it? Yep. So, they're making uh, teacups and mugs and plates and that yeah. to commemorate the Platinum Jubilee. Got a little bit of a Del Boy twist, though. It's got written on it, the Platinum Jubilee. Oh, wow. J-U-B-B-L-Y. No, they haven't. They fucking no, have. No, they pic- fucking there's haven't. There's pictures bollocks, bollocks, of it. Bollocks. I will show you the bollocks. pictures. There no, I need to see a fucking it. picture. I, I need to see it right you. now while we're on air live. I will live. show you this right, fucking that's bollocks. second. That ain't happened. I literally, I see the picture before I read the news. I know they've been passing fucking dogs off as fucking tigers for years, but that that's not happening. <laughs> Well, I thought you got to get an element said, of the Chinese in there. You know, you know they're back on the bum scrapes. What, the anal COVID Yeah, testing? they're back on the bum scrapes. Are you shitting me? Yeah. No, that's not even a pun. No, no, I swear pun, to God, no, I always no, say, are you shitting me? They're, they're, they're back on the bum scrapes. It's gone back up. They are. That won't a pun either. Fucking hell, he just showed me a photo. It looks... The platinum looks jubbly. Real. Or is that just a piss take picture? Anyway, no. either way, that's mad. Like, it's legit, mate. Look, there's the plate. Too legit to quit. Oh my god, that does look real, mate. Trust me, they've mm. made ten thousand eight hundred of these. Fuck it, I bet mean, get down back in the market, mate. Get yourself a couple. Chinese manufacturers, they fuck up a again. Couple. Four for twenty quid. Yeah, innit? Del Boy will be selling them now. The platinum jubbly. Come and get your lovely platinum jubbly. Unless you smash them all up. Do you know right? At the Kit Kat factory, if any of them break, like the wafers when he shits like that, yeah, and you get a Kit Kat. You know, sometimes you've got the layers to it and there's that kind of crusty, it gets, dusty yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah. That's the broken biscuits. You've told me this before, I'm sure oh, you have. I only learned that, that today. That this all crumbled no, down. Yeah, I've right. heard it before then. Yeah, you must have read it before. Yeah, it I saw all that gets today. smashed up and used again. Yeah, waste yeah, man. not, want not. Yeah, isn't it? Jeez. Recycle Kit Kat straight away. This one proper tickle me either is this week, mate. Fucking high posties. What? High posties, right? High posties? Clapham Sorting Office. Okay, right, postman. All right, mate, I had to fucking break Hire that posties. down. So they're, Not toasties. they're stoned. Yeah, right. Stone postman. Yeah, clap and common. Well, right. clap, clap and sort and office. They didn't want to be stoned. <laughs> oh, okay. These are old dudes doing part time jobs, just banging out a bit of post, right? Yeah. Is this in the office or on the rounds? Well, so in the sorting office, yeah. There was a parcel, hadn't been delivered for over a month. And they could see it was marked as kind of a uh, perishable item. There was like, no one, no one's, there's no admin around this, no one knows what's going on, etc. Fuck it, let's, let's open it. Probably not the first time a perishable package has been opened. So they bust it open, right? Right. And, and they've seen in there a load of brownies. Oh, okay. And I thought, uh, you know, edibles. Get, on, get on that, load of brownies. Absolutely lovely. Six o'clock in the morning. How you doing, Bert? How you doing, Arthur? Yeah, lovely. Yeah, really. with Enjoy your, your round. With your coffee and that. Load, yeah. of, load of part-time old boys going like going about their business. They've been filmed basically stumbling around in the road. <laughs> you, obviously, no no secret is hash browns. 
well, hash brownies, whatever you want to call them, stoned off their absolute fucking chops. One of them had to phone back to the post office because he was so high, he was greening out. Oh, my God. They had, to send, they had to send someone in one of the post vans and put him in the back of the post van to lay him down. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually quality. No wonder my fucking post has been late. Yeah, isn't oh, it? Oh, fucking Royal Mail's fucking stone keys. And what are they doing? Eating people's packages and shit. Oh, they probably do it all the time. That's bullshit, though. Probably do it all the That's, time. They shouldn't be doing that. Oh, well, like there you them, go, there's your lesson. Like all them birthday cards that go missing. Do you know what I mean? Well, don't laugh at man. It's not their fault. I can't help it. It's a habit. Just got to <laughs> welcome. It's a habit? Just got to help them. Kick it! <laughs> Go on, boy, you start us off. What we got this week? Random fact me up. Oh, yeah, lad, I have got a melon twister from the off. Oh, from the off. You got head spinners for me. I've got melon twisters. Right? Australia is wider than the moon. Fuck. Australia. Australia on its own, wider than the moon. 3,400 kilometers versus 4,000 kilometers. That's crazy. Let that sink in for a minute. When you look at it on a like map mm. of the world, like Russia's huge, China's huge, so they're bigger than the moon. Width. Gotta be. In yeah. width. Yeah, in width, not mass. It's the widest, well, I don't know whether it's the widest country in, in on the planet or whether that's just a convenient comparison stat. Well, who that, knows? Russia's got to be the one that's just above. Yeah, the size Russia of the moon. might be 5,600, who knows? Maybe it's a convenient stat. Yeah. Hey, that's a melon like twist that, to though. start with, just yeah. as, as a fault. That's got me thinking, yeah. We're, we're a narrow country, aren't we? That's how big the moon we're, is. We're narrow. Just, it, the moon's a little bit smaller than the width of Australia, but yeah, around. That's, that's one to start you off with, right? Okay. It's, it's one for the other side of your brain. This helps the other side of your brain. Literally Ooh. helps your other side of the brain. You are more creative when you are in a warm environment. For example, one of the most environments that you're most likely to produce your most creative thoughts Produces dopamine. Okay. It's in the shower. Yeah, I get that. How often do you sit there? Sit there? In the shower? Oh, I do. I sit down in the shower all day long. The fuck? Oh, all day long. I sit down in the showers all day long. What? Wait, what the actual uh, well, fuck? My, a lot of my showers go into a bath bottom, not into a shower unit. Yeah, but... I have a shower into a bath. But I'll sit there and I'll, I'll think about things. I'll, I'll plan my day out almost. A lot of people will do. Yeah, same. But you also think about... It's certain things that have been on your mind, I feel like you kind of think them out in the shower. I know a few things I thought about in the shower. <laughs> Not always creative yeah, business. Too ideas. much body wash going on there, yeah. yeah. No, but yeah, maybe if I'm going to make me millions, I'll do it when I'm in the shower. Yeah, like that. Having a soapy wink. <laughs> but there you go, kids. If you want to make your millions, do it while you're in the shower. With Pamela Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> And her five lovely daughters. Some imperial lever. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've got, I've got... Yeah, I'll give you a couple of animal ones. Right? Not, saying, Not really related, the animals, but they're both yes. animals. It's our favourite thing. We love the animals. Short and sharp. A flock of ravens is called an unkindness. It's not murder. No. That's crow. Raven. That's crow. An unkindness. An unkindness. Of, that's odd, isn't it? And it's a difficult word to say until now. I see it written down. I was oh, like, oh, I, I, wish really you like t- I wish you told me you was going to do one of these because these are there's some really unusual groupings like you've just done. Yeah, for, of, for especially of animals. Yeah. Like murder of crows. Yeah. Like, what, what the fuck? I'm guessing they're like old um, writers like Shakespeare and Chaucer's and things like that when they're describing birds that were seen as like evil birds of like witches and things like that. When it what happened to a breed like that? Be like. There's a truffle of humans. A truffle. A look, truffle. Look of at them. Humans. Look at them gathering in their bazookas. I know. I think we'd we'd probably be like a, a sw- big events would be like a swarm. Not long now, boy. Back your man, Queen or Attenborough. Who's going first? 
No, no. Back your money. Back your money. Queen or Attenborough, who's going first? Hands down, I don't want Attenborough to go first. Who's going first? Mm. Yeah. You think Queen? It's got to happen sooner or later, isn't it? Oh, I think New Monarch. Like, that's been waiting to happen for ages. Whereas Attenborough, one of a kind. Who knows? Talking of Queens, in Manhattan, well, Queens is in Brooklyn, I know. Queens, yeah, yeah. There are Manhattans. Man, man. Manhattans. What is that? What you are if you live there? No, ants. That ants. are only found in Manhattan within a fourteen-block radius. Get in. Why? It's unique to you, New York. Oh, I love ants. It's literally within a fourteen-block strip of the the city itself, Manhattan, and they're <sighs> titled Manhattans. You know, there's a species of ant that's evolved, the only species of ant to right. roll down hills. Oh. Mm. Like curl up in a bowl and yeah, absorb it, themselves. It, it, sen- right. it senses a certain vibration in the air chemically, like they're so chemically reactive. As soon as it senses a chemical reaction in the air, they all, as an army, Shit. roll down a hill. Yeah, can you imagine watching that? It's like rain coming down. Mm. You know, we've spoke about they form rafts in water and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've well, seen that. Yeah. Man- Fire ants. Manhattan, that's odd. I've, and Man- they're local Hat- to ants. only 14 yeah. blocks. One very... Yeah. That's an island as well, isn't it? With well, bridges. Yeah, yeah. Well, ants could cross, I suppose, so they're not colonised. But it's a lot bigger than 14 that's odd. blocks. That's a, that's a weird fact. Yeah. They take the world over. I'm sure we've said this shit many a time on there. Right, let me it's take it off world. Earth. Let me take it global. <laughs> yeah. More than global, space. universal, right? The universe is is by gravity, gravitational pull everywhere you go. Everything spins the same way. Everything moves the same way. Whoa, no, I'm not giving you that as a statement. Okay, good, because you'd be wrong to agree with that. Every single planet in our known universe, yeah, spins anti-clockwise. Okay, yeah. I don't know why I just had to sit here. And Only think that. one. That is. I didn't know this before I looked it up. I didn't know shit about this. Only one planet in our universe spins clockwise. Yeah. Venus. Wow. Venus, for some reason, is the only planet that we've tracked as spinning clockwise. Every single other planet spins anti-clockwise. Now, I don't know where Venus sits on that. I never did the rhyme things. We've done that before. I've never, you know, I, didn't, I don't know the rhyme of how many far it is out. I'm guessing five. Five out. I'm going five. What are we, four? Four out, three out? Mercury's near, isn't it? That's why it's small. Yeah. Right Mercury, down. Venus, right down. Earth, Mars. Oh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Saturn, Jupiter. Yeah, one of the only planets. Uranus. For some reason, this this rat, this Neptune. one planet. Oh, this, I've smashed that. It's one anyway, planet. Anyway, right? um, you know, teddy bears. Yeah, what well, like standard brown fluffy things kids play with. Yeah, yeah. not not fifties weird rockers. Okay, you know the film Ted? Nonce the, the basic versions of them. Yeah, right? Yeah. That's, that's a coined phrase. And a coined franchise. What, as in it's um, copyrighted or trademarked, whatever? To a, to a degree, right? It comes from a time, there was an American president called Theodore Roosevelt, yeah, right? Theodore Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he was out and about on a presidential hunt. Well, they used to do back in them days, 60s, yeah, 70s, in the woods and shit. Campaign and that. Yeah. Um, and they'd trapped someone, had trapped a black bear in one of the woods, which I was there to hunt. Oh, shit. Uh, and he was supposed to shoot it dead. Uh, and he refused. He said, I'm not shooting a trapped animal. Like, that's not what that's we're not here. Hunting. That's not hunting, that's not the sport. No. Um, and one of the people was, I, I suppose he had links with or knew somebody was that was a toy maker. Right. And went on to go, like, out of respect, it was like, let's make a bear, let's make a stuffed animal toy as a bear, in respect for him, and we're going to call it a teddy bear. And that is where the coin wow. phrase teddy bear has come from ever since. Now it covers a whole range of different looking animals, but essentially they're all bears. And that, right. that's, that's why a, a bear is such a popular stuffed animal. Because in all honesty, how, how often do you see bears and how often they, are they in people's lives? They're not. Well, it was the first kind of stuffed animal, really, wasn't it? Yeah, there you go. Down to Theodore Roosevelt. Go on, Ted. Go on, Ted. I've got one for you. What well, one? The shortest commercial flight in the world is in Scotland. It goes from mainland to an island. It's one point seven miles long and I lasts do, ninety seconds. I do not want to get in that motherfucking plane. It's literally got a jump over 
90 second flight. Can you imagine what that plane's like? Oh, yeah, it's like being wound up as you get on it. Bit like people a fr- outside, like, bit like a frisbee. There'd, yeah. be a, there'd be a massive geezer tossing a cable in the corner of the airport going, Oh, oh well, you see all that? Is that me? I throw this plane over there, like, oosh. Wait, not bad, mate. Not Do you know what I mean? Then. Wallop straight over the lock. Oh, over the lock, lad, there. You'd just Shh. be sitting in the plane for ages and they'd be like, well, Why are we not taking off? Oh, we've got to wait for a breeze. Shh. That's, that's what I can imagine. Gone. I've had a scary bit of business in a plane before <laughs> with my granddad. Oh, fuck that. I've got one last one for you, right? It's kind of more of a, did you know? Did you know the letter Q doesn't appear in any of the American state names? Yeah, it does, surely. No? Q- Go on. Q- no, Quebec's Canada, isn't it? No, not. Well, apparently it's a mind blower because yeah, it looks like it's fucked you up. Yeah, I'm having. Yeah, I've had a stroke in a minute. <laughs> that's, that's my thinking face. Shouldn't be doing that in public, mate. You get arrested for that. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you still going? I, I believe. Hell. I believe you on that. That's kind of stumped me a little bit. A little mind blower for you, then. Apparently, blew my mind. I don't, yeah. don't know how interesting it was. <laughs> blew my mind. Do you know? Go on. What the reason is behind why we shake hands? Oh, I feel like I've heard this before, but go on. I've never think. Throw something out of there. Why do you think we shake hands? Um, is it like the old blood brothers kind of thing? I I genuinely can't think. It's not like an embrace. It's just hands to seal an agreement. Do you, p- did people used to hold elbows, shake with four arms, like four arms? No, it seems weird now because it's like a bond of trust. Yeah, but it's to make sure you weren't going to fucking stab the cunt. It was to make sure you were unarmed. Everyone would lead to handshake with their what? predominant hand, which is your sword hand, your knife hand. Yeah. Back in the day when it was all close to close combat, gentleman's agreement, shook on. So at worst, if you got jumped, you had a chance to get to your weapon. They, they didn't have their weapon in their hand. Surely that people was just like, I'll carry it in my left. This is, this is why we should I'll shake my right shaking. and stab him in my left. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Not stabbing man's up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here's one for you, right? You know, we like we like our animal facts. We're very proud of our animal facts. Yeah, I had my little animal your bosch, session. You boshed us a couple in earlier. Here's a little zinger for you. Come on, where you it's going? My, it's my last one. It's my closer for you, right? Oh, big. Wombats. <laughs> it's a great word, let alone animal. Are Wombat. the only animal on the planet that shits cubes. Shape of his intestines, the way it pushes it out of his arsehole, Whoa. and the muscles in his arsehole, the way they get rid of shit, packs it into cubes. So it's like shit's Lego. Shit's cubes. Basically shit's Lego. I'm sure right. it ain't smooth all the way around. Now, if they ain't weird enough. But that, no, that's pretty fucking weird, mate. If they ain't weird enough, right? It then gets the shit. No, oh, what? Stacks the shit. <laughs> makes a Lego set. In a mini little temple to mark its territory. <laughs> the bigger the temple... Utter shit Oh, oh, oh no, nah, yes. nah, nah. Bigger the temple, right? The bigger, obviously, the arsehole. Because the bigger the base is, bigger the animal. So the bigger the tower is, it marks the bigger animal. So you're, you're trying to show off the fact that you've got a big arsehole. Yeah, next time you need to have a massive fucking shit gate, you just do it out your front doorstep, people will know not to fuck with you. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but what kind of message does that say? If it sends it to the other people. It says if you see a massive pile of shit and it's bigger than your pile of shit, don't fuck with me because I've got a big arsehole. I'm a big animal. Yeah, but big arsehole is not a proud moment. Well, genetic. If you're, if you're a two-foot animal, you're only going to have a tiny only... booty hole. That's fucked. If you're... Four foot animal, you can have a double the size baby. Yo. I don't know. As a human, I'd rather have a, a shit cubes. Arsehole. Guys, that's what I'm saying. The shit cubes. Shitting cubes is weird. Shit cubes. And then big, building a Lego temple is pretty fun. I up. mean, other interesting animals may include goats. Fucking goat outside. It's just a goat. No, it's a fucking goat. Right, we're we saying goat this week. We are going in on a big subject. Big subject that Hi Mike and Hi Joe have love for. A lot um, of your listeners out true there too. Passion, yeah. We're going in for the greatest hip hop album of all time. I'm going rap and hip hop. Oh, you okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm I know. Because, I'll, I'll chuck some more on being there. You know, because, so. and I'll give you my first example. Fifty Cent 
Get Rich or Die Trying is a rap album. That's not a hip hop album. That's a rap album. Man, I'll slap that cap off your head. Mate, that is up there for me. I'm putting mm. them up there as a contender already <laughs> for go. Now, you know full well that's one of my favourite albums of all time. So and, and let's, not, let's not get twisted. I was probably like 12, 13 when that came out. So I, that was... This is the kind of time, level we're man. going in on, man. We're going in on that level. That tonight. one's up there. That, that's, that's, if you want to get involved in this conversation, your production levels need to be higher. You need to have yeah, bars. Right. You need to have the lyrics. standards are big. You need to have an impact. It needs Every to be seminal. Every track being a banger. Your shit needs to be seminal. It needs to pave the way for direction of music for the next 10 years. That's what your records need to be doing. In the club was phenomenal. All right, let's start with that. Let's, let's talk along. about that. Why do you think that had such a big impact? Because one, it came from Eminem and Dre. So it's a Dre-produced beat, the whole album. Two of the biggest people on the planet at the time. So it's Eminem's scouted talent, and he features on a, two tracks, I think. Dre's produced the whole thing. So it's already made into a banger with the beats he's got there, with the way it's produced. You know, like he does these little bits in between. So as there's a missed beat, he'll put in a little sample or something. Like it's produced so well. And every single track, I will keep saying it, every single track you play is a banger. Yes. I can name you, like Bloodhound. Yeah, one, is, one of them lesser known ones. Yep. Yeah. Go and play it, and you'll be like, oh, I remember this, and Top you'll three. start banging Top it. three on anyone else's album. Trust Just me. Just what could be classed at the worst as a filler on a 50 Cent album. 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying. Absolute um, class. Do you, you think, do you think the fact that he, he launched, obviously with the two biggest guys in hip-hop, obviously helps. Let's, let's not take away from that. that he launched with a story. Yeah, and he, he's... He, he had an interest. He had, he had newspaper columns before his music was made. What all the thugs were trying to be... He actually was like he was on the streets, got shot nine times, mm. and he could rap about it as well. He got hit like I got hit, but he, he didn't fucking, fucking breathe it. it. In. You know yeah, what I mean? he took right. care of business after he knew what he knew who shot him and that. You know, it, breathing. That's why it became iconic because then he released the film, which was about that time in his life, basically mm. when he first broke through. People could relate. He had love from the streets, and let's not forget. Like I'm not going to put him up there on like, any any list of greatest MCs. Fifty, he's not, but. Could could he rhyme? Could he feel a flow? Could he get on a vibe? Yeah, man, he's, he's up there. He wrote, right up there. He wrote great lyrics for the type of flow he had because it's not quick, so he's not like, won't be considered a great lyricist, but for the way he used to just flow on a beat and be offbeat at times and his voice is so like chilled and smooth, it's kind of like the thug Snoop Dogg. Oh, from, front, from, Snoop Dogg. from front to back, he goes through so many different styles. And you think he featured with so Snoop many Dogg different. And then G Unit. G Unit's album is a great album. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not being too Underrated much into that, to be because fair. of 50 Cents. But that's one. That's one to go. consider. There you go. There, there's your levels. Out, out the block. I'm well, talking I'll, I'll levels. talk about my man, Nasty Nas. Oh, I thought you was going to go with Nasty. this. Now, I think this has got double points, but we're not including the double points. A, it's a debut, and B, it's... Illmatic, one yeah. One of the greatest albums of all time. Okay. I'm talking Illmatic, Nas. Yeah. Now, the reason I feel that this, this album carries so much weight is because this motherfucker put more words down per second than any other rapper I've done over the last 10 years. And every single one of those words told more of a story than any motherfucker I've done over them past 10 years. Now, he had some help with the songwritings. In terms yeah. of arrangement, they're all his lyrics. Nobody gave him lyrics, they're all Nas lyrics. He got produced by a lot of people. But we're talking about the production just now on the 50 Cent album. Now, the production yeah, makes true. the Yilmatic album. Yeah. But as an album for seminal impact, that Nas album is like a fucking Harold was alien landing on this planet. Harold was alien. It was like yeah. 19, 20, yeah, 21 19, going 20. through that whole production process. Shit. That's like an alien on this planet. Some of them bars are off the skizzles. Now, the reason I would probably put that at number one is not, as I say, hype for the words per minute. It's Nas as well. It's a vibe. The whole album's a vibe. Nas now, was at his best in the earlier parts of his career, wasn't he? When you got them samples of like the uh, the overhead trains running, like you know in the Rocky films and things yeah, like that, yeah, yeah. like you got you got that, and it it makes that album makes you feel like you're in the environment. 
I only appreciated that more as I got older because it wasn't as commercial. You got to think, I grew when all these albums were coming out. Well, the two that we spoke about, I was probably early teens. Mm. So, if it wasn't commercial and like in your face on MTV, then I didn't really know about it. But as I've got older, I have come to appreciate Nazi's early work was amazing. You can only rap about the streets for so long. You sell ten yeah. million albums, you're not on the streets anymore, right? No. And 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 those real heartfelt bars come from that Nas album, and they're, and they're sick. And he's for that. beef with Jay Z. Sick for that. That was that was played up for the. I, I saw a great story the other day, right? Go on. Snoop Dogg back in the day, Nas just blowing up. Pull up in LA. Okay. Cars going past, like Snoop sitting there with his crew, sitting on the porch, just chilling, you know what I mean? Doing his thing. Yeah. Uh, SUV goes past, pulls up real sharp, Snoop's guys are like, shit. Yeah. Fuck. Like, what's going on? What's happening? What's happening? All of a sudden, doors fly open on the SUV, back pops up, out jumps shit. this motherfucker, all dressed in red. Wow. Head to toe. Now, I don't know what colour. Crips and Bloods are. I don't know. The what Bloods hood. are red, obviously. I, I don't know what hood they were in. That's the more important thing. Okay. He's right there. And he starts running down the road at towards Snoop. And Snoop's like, Yeah, all my you know, all my all my guys are yeah, strapped. Yeah, they yeah, they yeah. start raging for their guns. He's like, No nah, man, no nah, man, that's that's nasty Nas from New York, <laughs> man. Leave him alone. And he like goes up and he's like, Snoop, Snoop, and he's like, Don't ever be Jumping out yeah. of bands, wearing yeah, colours right, again yeah. in this neighbourhood, you'll get your ass killed. Yeah, like, man. Holler at me next time and all that jazz, man. Yeah. He was just like, yeah, nearly could have got killed before like his career that. even took off. Okay, so we've mentioned two artists there that could potentially make it in as well. Well, we've both just mentioned Jay-Z and Snoop. Give me an album. Blueprint? Yeah, I'll say Blueprint. Okay. For me, I'm old school. Yeah, again, that was a little bit before I knew of him. But okay, yeah, yeah. I'm not so old school that I can't admit there's better albums made after 94 and that shit. I'm not that stuck in the mud, but so there's some good shit around the era. He's reviewed as like producing brilliant albums by a oh, lot. But his, his, his top bars are, oh, yeah. are top yeah. bars. I love it. One song I'm loving at the minute, Lucifer. Uh, just a random one, but the sample on it playing over again and his bars. Is it the fact that we can't name one album that stands out for him that he can't make it up there? I think debut, debut album. On goat rap albums, does it make it? Is, is it good, He's a good rapper and he's, a, he's got some good songs, but has he, had a, has he had a killer album? Is it on the... Is black any album? of his albums... Would they have a black oh, album? A black album is a... I don't know if it's similar. I just think it's bang. I think it got promoted up the ass. If you're the richest advertising agency in the world, you're going to get your product out there more than anyone else. The black album is a great album. But does it make... Is it on the levels of Get Rich or Die Trying or Illmatic? Does it make it into that kind of category? No, second tier. Any of Jay-Z's albums? Second tier. Okay, we did mention Snoop. Same question. I love Snoop Dogg. I really do. Does any of his, the Dog Father, for example, does any of his albums make it into the same category? Again, I'm probably going to have to say no, but he does get the condolences of probably appearing on all three of the albums that are going to be in the top three. So, yeah, because he is, <laughs> he's going to be involved. If you go rap <laughs> artist, he's well up on that he's, list. He's going to be he's going to be heavily involved in the success of this top three. But this is the goat of rap albums, mate. Uh, individual album. Individual album. Well, okay, right. Black Sunday, Cypress Hill. Absolutely stone cold killer, killer, killer album. Start to finish. Nothing bad about that album. Affected so many people's lives that people formed almost their opinions of Hispanic based hip hop stoner culture solely on this image. Now, the thing that like Dre, Snoop, uh, and those guys did. Is they created a G funk yeah, era image? That was like a Latina kind of. Look at Rockstar, the games making company. They've made an entire franchise off the back of the culture that Snoop and Dre made. Yeah, I don't know. For me, Cypress Hill doesn't make it into that category. It's up there again, along with like the Black Album, Jay Z, along with Snoop Dogg, probably Doggy mm. Dog World or Dog Father. Do you think but, it's up there. 
for me, it doesn't hit the level of hits no, from the make. bone. It doesn't hit the level of insane in the membrane. No, I know. I can name eight of the motherfucking game. I know the album, and banger. I know every that song's a banger. Half, half of them are bangers that most people would have heard of. The other half are very samey. I bought that album three times. Well, there paid you go. Money, paid personally hard for cash you. money. Cash personally money. for you, it's up there, but nah. I bought that when CDs used to be eighteen pound okay. a pop. If you're going to say that, I'm going with Eminem, Marshall Mathers LP. That's the banger with the real Slim Shady. Shout. With, that's not his debut album, but it pretty much is. That's when he burst onto the scene with that album. Shout. I'm going to say 75% shout, 25% clouded in prestigious sales. To again, personally, to me, because that's one of the first albums I ever bought. But that's same with you as Cypress Hill. Mm. Did they them two together take them two albums? Did they make it? I put them on par. No, I'm putting. I put individually. I, I Eminem a greater rapper than Cypress Hill, but I put the albums in terms of quality at par. I don't know if it's me being emotionally attached, but Marshall Mathers LP makes it up there with Get Rich or Die Trying or Illmatic. That's cool, and we'll we'll battle that out. But so, why would you say? What's the biggest reason for you to put Marshall Mathers down? Remember, we said uh, Ill Mac about music. Changed the game, mate. At a time where it revolutionised Dre for one, Doctor Dre mm. Fo- um, focused him at a product. Well, yeah, and then Look, it was that his first album under Dre. His best, or the second one. Um, was that the one with uh, my name is? No. That's the very first one. Yeah, I thought that People one. only really know two songs off the very first one. This one was Real Slim Shady. Um, what was the Cleaning Out My Closet? Oh, the, the, just the stand where everything come from. Uh, like, Kill everything. You. Everything. Kim. Yeah. Like the big ones. Yeah, yeah. That, for me, changed the game. He was kind of like, people compare him to Elvis, where he took black music to the people to white people and to the target audience of most of the music industry, right? Ain't no one fuck with a white boy. He did the same with rap, and he was fucking good at it. Really good at it. And again, that film that he made, 8 Mile, kind of solidified him as, oh, that's how you came up. That's what makes you so good at rapping and just going off in right. different directions. That's, that's the rapper. What about the album? What do you love about the album? It caused a shit storm at the time. It was... Me starting to be able to rebel, I was probably about 11, 12, and that's, I would say, where music's aimed at. So for a whole generation, and trust me, if I speak to anyone three or four years either side of me, that album is in their goat, 100%. Because everyone knew it, it was so profound. It was just in-your-face profanity. It was a big step forward from... For censorship. It for people. Was it's kind of like Beastie Boys hitting where it's like, okay, this is what people think white American kids are like. Actually, this is what white American <laughs> kids are like. Yeah. All right, I've got a double-headed goat for you. Okay. Now, right, hold de- on, hold on. Can we just tidy this shit up? Levels, right? At the top, 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying. Nas, Illmatic. Yeah. I'm putting Eminem, Marshall Mathers LP up there. I'm That's allowing Cypress that. Hill. I'm allowing that. There. I'm allowing that as a wild card. That's no, I'll probably Hill put Cypress Hill under that run. He, yeah, they're on the JG like Snoop Dogg like like level. It. It's, under, it's under the run. Uh, okay, yeah, I've got a double Go edged goat. What you got? Now, this could be double edged, depends how old you are. I'm talking about Dr. Motherfucking Drizzy. Oh, 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 name me any one of his albums. I'm just talking about two. I'm talking about the Chronic albums. Now, this is why I think it's a double edger. Yeah. Yeah, Both man. of those records hit like sledgehammers. Yeah. It, again, it's one of them albums. Every tune you play is just a banger. Like Again, pull out a random one. The beyond, Watcher. Beyond. The Watcher. Every song is beyond. Love that shit. Well produced because it's Dre. And I think that's when he found Eminem. He kind of had Snoop back on his books. He had Exhibit. Everyone was peak. Ice Cube was back. For the second one, 2001, everyone was peak. And the tour as well, the Chronic tour was unreal. There was DVDs. I had the DVD on it. Mm. Well, no, it might have been VHS. Fuck knows. Yeah, probably. But it was banging, mate. Honestly, 
it was, it's the G-Funk. That was kind of the birth of G-Funk. It's the polish, mate. Some people can throw an album together. There's a lot of great producers out there, but no one drops a fucking Dre album like Dre drops a Dre album. And they are so pure Dre. And I, I can, I can lean towards 2001 as my favourite album, but just as a double header rather than discussing two Dre albums, take your fucking pick. Okay, that for me makes it up there. That's in the category now. Bearing in mind off the first album. Ain't nothing but you think, baby. baby. Yeah. Too many, too many. We're not going to go karaoke. So that's in the top car- That's in the top bars. Right, let's have a little scrabble around then. Who else can we Just thinking? quickly, I'm going to throw out two artists. Right, go on. What, what well, was actually, that? yeah, I'm, I'd still do it. Tupac and Biggie. For me, Biggie, Ready to Die, is a banger. It's, it is literally notorious. <laughs> oh, there it is. There's some filler in that, though. Yeah. Not all the tunes are good. Uh, I think we get hit. You almost get hypnotised by yeah. his rhythm good sometimes. Pun- good punnage. Yeah. yeah. Big punnage. Um, yeah, you almost get hypnotised by that shit. Sometimes the lyrics weren't all that good and the beat was a bit poppy. But he sold. He, he, got, he got paid. It's a Diddy album. He got paid. We're comparing it's a Diddy. it to Drake. It's Diddy. Yeah, it's Diddy. Yeah. If he produced by someone else, he would have sounded harder and had a harder edge. But okay. He, he, he fulfilled his role. So Tupac was produced by Dre for a time. Yeah, he's not even not even in the same breath. I could only name you about three Tupac songs I like, let alone the whole album. Yeah. Yeah, that's the bad thing about Tupac. He's up there as like one of the greats and it's like... Yeah. Well, I think I'm scribble scrabbling around for anything better. I can name artists I like all day long and great songs off their albums, but I think I'd scribble scrabble around for anything more now, solid, top of my head. I'm sure, Big leagues, sure anyone um, that doesn't listen to this might want to remind us after, but yeah, I'm not sure I can think of anymore. You've not mentioned an Outcast album. No, this is, they're great albums, but they're not super strong. Really? Their first player's ball was. That was that was pretty big. They embed they they put Southwest on on the map or South Hip. Yeah, it was East Coast West Atlanta. Coast. That was it. South. And the, the big boy told a story about when they went to award shows that they, they got no love from anybody. People they go on stage to accept the award and they get hate and booed yeah. by everybody because they yeah. just weren't East Coast or so West. It was Coast. all West East, yeah. And then obviously they fucking smashed it, and everyone was like, "Big up Outcast," and wow. put and put Southern hip hop on the map. Oh, Kanye West. College dropout. Yeah. Oh, it's a late entrant. It'll be in lane eight. I ain't gonna win. That's a big album, mate. It'll be lane eight. Really? It's a big outsider. It's not it's not gonna win. You sure? I think that's more more that? more held up by the strength of four to five songs. No, nah, I knew every song in the album. Yeah, we know brilliant. them all, but four to five of those songs are great. But the, the album's put together well. The production, again, as we say, it's a story, it's a cover book, a comic book of an album. Every song links through, telling you a story. <laughs> yeah, but then that's only an aspect of it. Like some of the individual songs on there as well. Like for example, when it all falls down. As soon as you hear that in your head, that's mm. such a beat. Yeah, there's a lot of good, good songs. On there that there are standout songs in all the albums we've named. Well, I'm, I'm going to call it. Otherwise, it's going to ramble on. So, what we got? What's in the bank? You was calling it. It's gone, Doctor Dre. So we've got Fifty Cent. Mm-hmm. Nas, mm-hmm. Eminem, Eminem, and the Chronic. Chronic was it not another one? No, that's the only ones that has made those. Oh, levels. I told you, like Dre's all over. Dre's this. dominating this shit. He knows how to make a fucking rap album, yeah. mate. He does. Just because we said him in order, so the first two we said was Fifty Cent versus Dre versus Nas. Nas. Okay, right. There we go. Oh shit! This is difficult, man. Because lyrical content. Nas. Beats. Get rich. Yeah. Overall production. Get rich. Yeah. Numbers. Get rich. Probably get rich. Oh, mate. He dominated charts. All right. There, there are four categories. Three, one. Three, one. Okay. Right. Best of four. Done. Bang. Get rich goes through. Okay. Now, Marshall Mathers LP or The Chronic. Lyrics, Marshall. Yeah. Beats, Chronic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was the other category we just said? Numbers was one. Oh, 
I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to know. No, yeah. I'm gonna, we're going to have to say Drew. I would say no category. Like, we're talking like triple platinum. We're talking about Dre 2001. Like, that's we're no. talking Marshall Mathers. I, I, can't, I can't talk with confidence. What was, what was the last category? This was split. The last one was overall production. Overall production. Like 2001 all day long. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean? The like, way the album goes on Eminem's is just unreal with the skits in between with his managers kicking the fuck off. It sets a persona. sets a persona for him. Actually, actually, do you know what? I'm going to concede. As much as I do love the Dre production, pure yeah, comic Dre book. Dre production. Pure comic book in album. Marshall Mathers' album tells the story of building a character and presenting it to the world in a much more HD format than the first the album did. with his managers kicking off yeah. it and shit. All right, okay. I'll put Marshall Mathers through. So, we've got a battle of... <laughs> Yoda versus fucking Jedi. But Jedi? Yoda is a Jedi. Yoda versus Luke. Yoda versus Luke, basically, yeah, This it? is Eminem, Slim Shady, Marshall Mathers LP. Shit. Versus 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying. Right, okay, this is where we can break it down into a little bit more categories. Gran- little bit more gran- granular. Bangers on album. Ah. Uh, Get rich. No. Or day no, no. long. What are you chatting about? No. Marshall Mathers has got a couple of interesting dark ones. Get rich has got fuck. How many, no. how many tracks on Get Rich? 16? No. 14 of them pure gold bangers. No. Pure gold bangers. No, mate. I'm Bullshit. Not having that. Bullshit. Check it. You've got. Check your Spotify guys. The way I am, you've got the real Slim Shady. You've got look at you reaching under pulling, the influence. Pulling for I am. I'm not. You've got Kim. They're, they're all right songs. They're not bangers. They're, they're good songs if you like Eminem. I'm talking about Fifty Cent, mate. Yeah, Every iconic. single one's a banger. Go back to your original category: lyrics, Eminem. Okay, give you that beat. Beat fifty. Fifty. Overall production. M. Numbers. Oh, I think, M. I think Fiddy. I think M takes that. No, I don't know. I think Fiddy. Are we going to have to look this up? I think we might have to. I think, I think Fiddy might get them numbers because I think people are selling more records. I know M's like been around for long, but I think people are selling more records on a digital level when Get Rich was out. So you're back in 15. So I'm saying get rich album sales. I bet they're in the, like the 400 million, 500 million shits. Okay. Marshall Mathers LP. Album sales. Yeah, Hit album me. sales. 21 million copies. 21. Of yeah, I reckon Get Rich is monster, that. Do you reckon? Yeah. Get Rich or Die Trying. Mm. 30 million. Mm. Tops it. Told you, homeboy. So if four all, who do we like the most? What album would you put on if you had to right now? Okay. I think this is the category that wins it. Every track you could happily sit and listen to. If it randomly come on your playlist, a random track from that album, either album. If you got a skit from one of Eminem's of his manager shouting at him, that's not really a beat you want at a party. If or yeah, with a party jamming, and, and, and you put even it on, just like me and you, you catching up, whatever, and you got music on in the background. It's super versatile. With fifties, every beat you could have on in the background, and it's a little head banger. Mm. It's a no. Un- I un- understand the artistry is is more professional on one side of the fence. That wins but it. if I'm putting a jam on at a party, if I just want to. If I just want to get my shit on, I'm going 50 cent, Have get rich or die trying. Have we just named that as a go? I reckon so, mate. Bah. Bah. <laughs> so, Joe, a lot of goating around been going on. What have we learnt this week, mate? Yeah. Well, this week, we've learnt there's been posties off, there's nothing clapping. <laughs> Baking brownies. <laughs> Stumbling around, dropping letters down fucking drain pipes. Well, edibles all right. over your mouth and shit. This is why your post ain't arriving. You thought it was just a Christmas plug up. This is why. <laughs> uh, we also learned people are dumb. Well, we knew this anyway. Still 
There's people falling for stupid shit out there. People stop being dumb. Open your I'm eyes. I'm taking out the loan. Is that what you're on about? Open your eyes in this world. That's stop just stupid. being yeah. motherfucking dumb. And if you are going to be dumb, don't come crying to me and the media. Although, do come <laughs> to the printed media so I can still read about your stories and laugh. <laughs> yeah, innit? And to play our podcast. <laughs> just like the Chinese fucking up. <laughs> with the old platinum jubbly plates. Oh, our good friend. They'll be down Dagna Market soon. Come and get your plates, mugs, <laughs> cups. <laughs> platinum jubbly. Next time you really need to get super creative. As you, yeah, get in a shower. Make sure it's in the middle of a soapy one, eh? <laughs> that's when you're going to be, that's when you're going to be your hottest, isn't it? It says you, you come up with your best <laughs> ideas when you're your warmest. If you're already under hot water, you're working your heart rate up. You're starting to feel a little bit warmer than you would have done. That's when you're going to have your best ideas, boys. So just keep a notepad handy, eh? <laughs> in the shower. In your left hand. <laughs> Next time you go to shake someone's hand, just have a little look. Make sure they ain't got a little assassin's knife attached to their wrist. Yeah, isn't it? Mm, Going on like it's medieval it. with Assassin's Creed kind of shit. Juke you up why as we well. Do it? We've got wombats shitting out fucking cubes everywhere. <laughs> when did that start? Dicey, mate. That sounds... <laughs> Very dicey. That's, that's dicey. Very right, dicey. Right there. And I'll tell you what, we goated it out. Who knew? Turned out to be 50 Cent. I'll tell you what, that yeah, boy deserves man. a medal. He got shot nine times, still alive. And he's still breathing. Still breathing. Yeah, man. And he's, and, and he's one of the two high guys, greatest rap album of all time, so he must be buzzing tonight. Well, exactly. Bigger than anything he's ever won. When Big. he went platinum, all of that shit. Big up to the lad. He's won. Go. Uh, uh, M and Dre, you're not getting a replica. You can buy your own. And they both kind of produced it, so it's it's goats all round. It's it's around the goats, a band of goats, M- a murder of goats. What do you call a herd of goats? A, tri- a trillion goats. A tr- a trillion goats. A kill a, a killer goat. A goat of goats. Billy Goat Gruff. <laughs> bah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. Is that the last ever goat? I don't know, probably have to wait till season three to find out. When you come to the end of the line with a buddy who is more than a brother and a little less than a wife, getting blind drunk together is real.